you see this dorsal vagal term here. And the dorsal vagal term, that references Stephen Porges' polyvagal theory. And, and Porges' contribution to our understanding of the autonomic nervous system is that like back in the day, we would say, oh, stress. That means you have the accelerator and the brake on at the same time. Uh, and the accelerator is sympathetic arousal. And remember, sympathetic arousal isn't just fight or flight. When we're talking about, when we're talking about, uh, sorry, you're, you're good. Uh, we're talking about sympathetic arousal and this, and this curve here. This is just the, the acceleration of high intensity on sympathetic arousal. You have whole ranges that aren't pictured down here that are just the easy metabolic function and contribution of that energy system into our, into our biology. So when we're talking about uh, sympathetic arousal in this range, when we just, we're just talking about the higher intensity zones, especially those that are pertaining to the survival responses of fight and flight. That's the highest intensity of sympathetic arousal. And just as a little extra uh, nerdy information, uh, in terms of fight and flight and even of freeze, there are areas in the, in the brainstem and the periaqueductal gray that are localized for those kinds of behaviors and organizing those kinds of behaviors. So uh, even though it is fueled by a sympathetic arousal, it still has these distinct sort of pathways, say, for fight and flight. That's why we can say sympathetic arousal isn't just fight and flight, or fight or flight, or it's not one general energy system. It's also really quite refined. The, so we have the sympathetic side, but then we have the parasympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system. Uh, and, uh, and so when we were back in the day saying, oh, stress is the brake and the accelerator on at the same time, the, uh, the brake was the parasympathetic branch, and people would remember it by parachute, you know, bringing you down and so on, and rest and digest and so on. But it's more than that. And so Porges' contribution was nice because it says, uh, it's not one system, but at least two. The parasympathetic has two major branches that are, that are different, and they're, they're different phylogenetically, they're different architecturally, and they're different functionally which means they're different in terms of their evolutionary history, which is where Porges traced it. They're different in the, in the, in the nerves and the way they're operating. For instance, the, the, the ventral or the engagement system is more myelinated than the, and the dorsal system is not as myelinated. Um, and then it's different functionally. So these two branches are, are functionally quite different. So when we're talking about orientation and connecting to the environment through the senses, when, uh, when Phil was saying, oh, you know, there are people out there, uh, he was orienting. His system was orienting, social engagement. And that's, that's prototypical ventral vagal process. So part of the reason that we are so keen on orientation is that it primes for that ventral vagal system which, is, which shows up in its prototypical form as social engagement. But for us, because our attachment history has been so compromised and is so impoverished, uh, like people and, and tribe is, uh, is sketchy. And so I'm pretty ambivalent about uh, other people. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, and so, for good reason. Uh, but it means that we use the ventral vagal impulse and architecture in a freeform way by saying, oh, what if you just let your eyes go where they want to go? And then you leave it up to the organism to choose what it's going to find as the target of its ventral vagal search. And a lot of times, it'll find nature. Am I, and, and sometimes, uh, you, you know, you will be with a person who's really sort of dialed in and, uh, you know, and, and, and they'll just look at you, going, uh, my eyes are going, you know, where they want to go, uh, right? And so uh, that's, that's like really ventral vagal process. The, uh, the dorsal vagal uh, process, uh, uh, poor just traced back, way back to cartilaginous fish. Uh, and remember when I was going, oh, the paramecium's <laughs> moving around, it's locomotion that goes, <laughs> The most primitive 
self-protective response is don't move. Like stop your locomotion because predators often need motion to stimulate their predatory approach. So if I can just go, eh, then I'm, I'm not so much a target. But, it's, uh, but it goes all the way back then to cartilaginous fish. So if you've seen like National Geographic and you're seeing deep under the sea and then these wild creatures, you know, just going by and then, and then they come out again. Um, uh, the, all of that freezy business is older than bones. Freezy business is older than bones. And so that's old. That's, that's pretty old. Right? I'll tell you, my bones sometimes feel old, too. Right? But uh, no, this, it's old. And, uh, and so it's more primitive. So that's the, that's the phylogenetic piece. That's its evolutionary piece. Architecturally, in terms of, of how it's, it's operating, it is innervating primarily subdiaphragmatically the organs, the visceral system. And it is mostly feeding back information that's important for homeostasis. So it's sussing out, hey, how are things going in the most vital regions here? Organ system, right? And so it's giving back that information <coughs> and, uh, and, and then functionally, it is really good at freezing. I mean, it's always involved in things like peristalsis and so on, but, <coughs> but it is also this this freezing system uh, or the, the system. Uh, and wow, that's an oxygen conservation system. So you slow down the heart rate. You slow down the need for oxygen. You slow down uh, the metabolic process. And the system can operate in a hypoxic state more readily. You, you, you know, you hear every now and then, you know, the kiddos falling through the ice. Uh, they've been under there. 15, 30 minutes, and, and with careful sort of resuscitation, they can actually be okay without like significant brain damage. And that, and that always mystifies people until you get like, oh yeah, this freeze system starts to shut down oxygen using systems and just preserves that, that brain. So it's going to shut down, it's going to slow down uh, this oxygen using process. And given you a chance to, you know, uh, get rescued and get oxygen back to the brain, it's super amazing and super problematic when it is ongoing and not, you know, not resolved. So I guess um, moving on then to our work with it, um, freeze uh, as a as a uh, has important psychological and behavioral and uh, you know sort of components such that um, it, for us freeze means and there's a whole continuum of freeze have we done the dissociative continuum yet we could we could do that we could do that for sure <clears throat> and um, there's a whole range of how freeze is going to manifest everything from an out of body experience or catatonia to like, I eh, have this little, I, I dinged my f little pinky and there's a little bit of numbness there. So it can be this really micro expression of it all the way to this, the, you know, massive systemic uh, shutdown. And then um, uh, as we experience it, it's going to be a diminution of or a decrease of of affective range, affective modulation, that includes prosody, the the like the voice and the way that it that we are singing. You know, if you ever listen to a mom or parent with a baby, they're singing to those babies, and 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 that that prosody, <laughs> prosody, <laughs> is is this is this ventral vagal thing as opposed to the Latin affect and the breathy voice and the pitch not modulating like that. Right? I had a uh, we had a, uh, a flight attendant, a guy who was who was talking like 
something like this onto his thing. It's it's like you know that's that you're immediately hearing that's that's freezy business impinged on his system. Um, so the prosodies, the modulation of of pitch, uh, that's that's a part of the system. So when you're thinking think depression and somebody not having the energy, and also like the the ventral vagal system innervates the facial muscles. So all of all of like like baby communication when you you know and and communication with lovers and friends you know there's all of this like emotional signaling that's nuanced as all oh, get out um, and and uh, and then there is like um, there is freeze face right like flattened affect and not much mobility not much movement of pitch. So, um, which, by the way, has really, like, all of that signaling is what feeds baby brains. That grows dendrites in baby brains, really important. Uh, and, uh, and if you Botox that away, the baby's <laughs> like, what happened to mom? You know, uh, who, who put Frankenstein up here? I, you know, I, the, the, the zombie movies, I ain't ready for that. So um, uh, the, the, that, that's, uh, that's, that's important. That social engagement signaling is what helps us understand tribe and how you're doing. I get, a, I get an instant snapshot of your entire system just by, just by seeing how things are there, right? So, um, uh, that's that's pretty key, and the movement of all of that is really key. Um, when just as a sidelight, when we say, "I'll oh, just let the eyes go where they want to go," you are coming into movement, and you are moving neck and head and eyes. That's all ventral vagal. That's all engagement system. And in order for the freeze to really set on, to really dominate a system, it actually hijacks fibers from the dorsal vagal system. So if you just use those ventral vagal sort of tools, you deprive the dorsal vagal system of its mojo. It's like, ah, oh, this path is closed, and so you can't, can't get as freezy just because I am using those ventral vagal uh, fibers. <clears throat> and so uh, last couple of points. So uh, the resolution of that and the completion of that, the, the movement of thresholds up through that, and my comfort in that is handled by the fact that in freeze, there is just as much blue as red, right? Every stick has two ends. And so in this, in this graph here, you see this is the freezy business. Things are fragmented. They're kind of broken apart. They are dissociated. But it has just as much blue as red. So I'm not afraid of freeze. There is plenty of mojo and, and exceeding mojo in, in these states because with less emotion, with less, less sensation, uh, with, with less you know, sort of input from the outside, I can, I can have uh, less of a discrete experience of myself and of borders and boundaries. Like if I don't feel where I begin and end, suddenly I can receive and perceive things that are outside of myself. And in fact, I'm not even sure where outside of myself might be. Some of us think this experience of oneness uh, and, uh, and non-self, for instance, is a really uh, important step. You get a taste of that from being in freeze. And a blue side of that is I don't have the narrow um, conditioning input from my physiology that actually begins to, hold, let's hold the mic for just a second because I, I, have, I have a queue of people who are asking questions. So um, uh, the, the, our, my sense of self is important to build but it's basically built around, I like it, I don't like it, the approach avoidance system, what's red and what's blue. I'm a person who likes sashimi. 
I'm a person who really enjoys ramen. I'm a person who is a mover, you know, I like movement. And I, there are certain things that I don't like, and, you know, like scratchy t-shirts or something, right? I mean, there's a whole, th uh, that's me. But if you ask somebody in this state, oh, do you like, uh, like, you know, t-shirts that are maybe more, uh, maybe not uh, 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 bamboo or soft cotton or stuff? It's like, uh, I don't know. Well, do you want to you, you go see a movie? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like, yeah, what do you want to see? I don't know. What do you want to see? I don't know. What do you want to see? And so it's, it's that. It's undifferentiated. I'm not sure. What do you like? What do you think I should like? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't have my reds and blues identified. I'm undifferentiated. Right? So part of what we're trying to do is help them differentiate by going, okay, yeah, would it, yeah, uh, would it be better for you to, to would it sit or stand? If you want to talk, not talk. If you want to sit, sit over here, over there. You want the blinds up or blinds down? Do you like this? Do you not like this? Do you like that? Do you not like that? And all of that is beginning to identify and create self. And, and that's, you know, for people that are in the whole non-dual thing, that's a problem. It's like, hey, wait a minute, aren't we trying to get that? You can't, get a, you can't transcend self till you got one. And so we're trying to build then ego strengthening by building that sense of, hey, I'm this. I like this, I don't like that. And my reds and blues and the clearer differentiation definition of those creates a sense of where and how I am in terms of emotional and cognitive definition and then hopefully also a bit of the sensation that goes with that. This is, this is me, that's ego strength. And to be able to get feedback of like, oh, now I'm choosing to take this action and I can actually have a thought Oh, now I'm going to take this action and follow through with that and get feedback on it. That reinforces this agency that says, I can do this. I can. And the first word of that is I. Like, I have capacity. I have agency. I can act on the world, and the world gives me feedback that I just did that, as opposed to Botox face. Right? Botox face is no response. And that's where I don't exist because what I do gets no feedback. So feedback is key and that builds back ego strengthening that then we can take into, uh, say, a freezy state and then all of that can dissolve. All of that can let go. And, and again, part of the reason that you know, Jack Cornfield and others had me talk to their teachers is because uh, people get into freezy states and they begin to disappear, but without the ego strength to say, oh yes, now I feel released from self, rather than I'm fragmenting and I don't know where I am. Those are, that's the, the red side is, I am disappearing, I'm going, where? And the blue side is, I'm released from this conditioning and I feel the participation with everything that is without distinction. So that's a pretty big blue, right? And the, and the, and the unhooking of, of the reds from that blue is really key so that we can just get that state of dorsal vagal. So, um, but it's that, to me, that the end game is biological synchrony, which means all of these states are working in concert. That is, I've got access to my freeziness, I've got access to those states and all the benefits of those states. I've got access to sympathetic arousal. And the, the, the freezy business is oneness, non-identification, non-attachment, uh, the, the, uh, and sort of emotional neutrality, uh, or, or on, the, on the red side, flatness. And then on the sympathetic side, sympathetic is really good at the honing of attention. So I have singleness. So at the same time I am everything, the sympathetic says I'm this. And, and I, can, I can hold those apparently paradoxical poles at the same time. Uh, and I've got this singularity and focus and energy. So I like focus and energy. Uh, freezy business is I've got everything. Right? The, the whole range, nothing distinct in any of that. 
right? The sympathetic says, yeah, I've, I've, got, I've got the whole thing, but I also have singleness of focus and also singleness of, of existence. So I can experience the distinction of reds and blues and then the feeling of all of those together is, is me. And so if you get the oneness, you get the singleness, then you add the ventral vagal system, which is really unique for, for our species, uh, and that's love. That's the warmth of, of caring and, and our social engagement, our existence as, as social beings and connected beings and tribal beings, which means that, uh, that I care as much for you as I do for myself because we are, we are together. And, uh, and if I can do that within the framework of both singleness and within the understanding of everything together, you know, we, we have something here because it seems to me the challenge of our, our movement is to be able to hold distinction, like the value of culture, and at the same time hold the, the larger frame of like the family of life, certainly the human family, but also the family of life. And if I can participate in all of that while not losing distinctness, then, then we've really got something. If I have the energy then to act effectively within that, I begin to manifest an input into uh, the planet that I think is going to be A, enjoyable, fun, and B, more effective. So, so freezy business. You've got to love it. The, the visual, let's say, of this settling or this sinking, like, deactivation, um, I could imagine there being, in a lot of cases, real similarity to what freeze would look like of, you know, that just sort of low-grade thing happening, so. Yeah. Or, or not so low-grade. Uh, and so thank you also for reminding me. I'm just going to name some of the physiological uh, milestones or markers of how you might recognize freeze. <clears throat> some of them I've already mentioned, like prosody, you know, the voice. And also like the, the decreased respiration as an oxygen conservation system. And it's going to be decreased respiration and not deep breath. Sometimes people are just really afraid of or a the sensation of a deep, spontaneous breath sends intensity that is over threshold. So as an oxygen conservation system, you know, you might, you might see people that are they're very soft and, and like, hey, I'm really non-threatening and, um, you know, I'm, like, I'm a surfer, so I, I seem just really laid back, but in fact, my system is expressing freeze, you know? And so, um, you know, the, the degree of breath that's there, and you can hear it. How much, how much vibration are those vocal cords doing? Because the, the ventral vagal system is innervating the face, it's in, innervating the larynx, pharynx, it's bringing modulation to the heart. The vagal break is that ventral vagal system that lets off on the in-breath and goes back down on the out-breath. That's modulation. Uh, it, uh, it also then is, is innervating the muscles in the inner ear that, that tune your hearing like to the frequency of the human voice, right? and, which is like part of why like, it's really hard to get hearing aids that work really well in a crowded situation. Like, we haven't atten gotten that attenuation as well, but that's, that's ventral vagal. Um, and the movement of the eyes, the neck and the head, what else? Am I missing anything ventral? Ah, the movement of the face, for sure. So uh, all the signs of, of the dorsal vagal system are the opposite of that, like not the motility, not the, not the prosody, uh, the difficulty in getting vocalization going, uh, even, um, is in there. Um, and then there are other larger signs that people will report Oh, and one of them that's, that's going to be key is, is just immobility, degrees of immobility, numbness. Uh, and one of the classic ones is what I have unfortunately, again, uh, Monica, if you could just come up with a new term here. I'm sorry to burden you with this <laughs> responsibility, but you're on a roll, you know, um, uh, with outside. So um, 
is the eye gutter. And so, you know, you'll be, it's like there's this position that just feels so attractive and so good. It's like, it's like the ru rigged roulette wheel where, you know, the eyes are moving around, the, wheel, the ball's going around the roulette wheel, and then red 21, and red 21. Okay, and then the eyes are moving around and moving around, and then red 21, red 21. And it just means that the system is like, uh, it, feels, uh, it feels restful, but it is a state-specific position. And it is a position like, like um, you know, you've heard of power positions, right? There's a whole, there are whole websites where you're supposed to go, ah, or ah, or ah, yeah. ah, whatever, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so um, uh, the, the, um, this, each of those positions has cued to it uh, state-specific and sometimes species-dependent uh, execution of, of emotional states. And so you can, you can, for a time, you can create a state within yourself by moving your body into a certain position. It's like, okay, that, that can feel pretty good. Uh, likewise, this position, this state, is going to be linked to, potentially, red 21 is linked to freezy states. Freezy states. Uh, and so, uh, what we do with that, I mean, this is, this is what we call the, the eye gutter. Um, would, you, would you mind uh, uh, let her, I'm, yeah, we're in a we, we dialogue here. Um, you, you may have feedback coming back. Her? Yes, G-U-T-T-E-R, like the ball is, you know, going around, or it's a, sort of a bowling, I guess, analogy, right, where the ball when you're bowling with me, it ends up in the gutter a lot. So, um, it can be any place. It can be this. It tends to be more like this, you know, because it's down. You've heard, like, the term downcast, right? So, it tends to be more down like that, but it can be any place, really. Yeah. But it's the fixation and the regularity of that that you notice it. And we're looking all the time to see where people's fixations that, you know, put them in and repeated states. Like, what's, what states are being evoked by what positions? Same thing as, like, thousand miles in the air. Yeah. Can be. Can be, right? Like, that's freezy. If you have immobility in the eyes, that's immobility. And, and the thousand mile stare means my eyes are not in motion, and they are not registering emotionally. Right? So when, I, when we're saying, let your eyes go where they want to go, um, and orientation is connecting to the environment through the senses, it means connecting to the environment. So this is not connecting to the environment. This is moving the eyes around. This is connecting to the environment. Because right? there's registration, there is a tension that goes ping, and that's registration, that's an emotional like combo there. It's like, oh yeah, lilies, you know, or, or tulips. So. So, uh, so those, those immobility states are, are key to track and signs of it. And then the reports also of, say, heaviness. Ah, oh, I just feel so heavy. Or sometimes even fatigue. And, and these are really key. And, and this, is, this gets to what Monica is saying, that, 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 that this deeper processing and the blues are, are often friends of and, and coexisting with freezy business. Like, a person's like, oh, gosh, I'm so tired now. I feel just so tired. And then the, our intervention would be, so if it's possible then, just to feel how physically you feel that, like if it's the eyes that feel heavy, or, or to be able to get into a position where you don't have to hold anything up, where you can just go into this. Because freeze is, as a conservation stage, this uh, conservation phase is also a rest phase. Some of the blues of, of freeze are retreat. Like, oh, I'm going to go on a mini retreat right now. Mini respite, recharge. And that recharge shuts things down. And one of the best ways of thinking about freeze is, um, is like uh, bandwidth exceeded, 
so I have to shut things down. In California, uh, we do rolling blackouts. So, okay, our bandwidth for energy production is going to be exceeded, and that's going to that's going to pop our circuits. It's going to it's going to shut down the system. Rather than shutting down the whole system, let's shut down Riverside and Bakersfield. They never shut down like Hollywood or Encinitas, right? It's always you know. A riverside or Bakersfield or something that the you know the pe people in Sacramento define that, but uh, uh, but they shut down that those areas so that the the demand for processing doesn't exceed its bandwidth. Freezes like that. It's like don't need emotion right now. I can do without sensation. I'm not going to move because then I've got to process that input. And so just give me a second to you know. Sort through my receipts, and then I'm gonna, you know, get my taxes done. But uh, I just gotta, I just gotta decrease the bandwidth. Uh, sorry, decrease the throughput and decrease the input. So it shuts down the demands for processing, and then the system comes back, and it, we're back online again, okay? and operating fully. And at once that the demand for processing really begins to meet better the the the, the bandwidth. So some of those feelings of like heaviness uh, are really key, and to just be able to allow that uh, to come in, it's, it can be super pleasant, you know, just to not to have to do anything. And I, I did, it. I think I did a session in the last couple of weeks where somebody just like popped over on the couch. It's just like they're on the couch, so they don't even have to use energy to hold themselves up. Right? And so they were just there. It felt so good to them because they were they were ready for blue. You know, freeze wasn't this red thing for them anymore. They were ready for blue. It's like, yeah, you're offering me a chance to rest and not do anything. I want to be first on that list. And, and so, yeah, just that's part of the value of our spa also, right? To let your body not have to, like, effort itself to stay upright or eyes open or even listening or paying attention, right? To be able to let yourself rest and catch up. So all of that then helps you achieve like um, uh, new thresholds in freeze, and then also come back into uh, a, you know a, a situation where your bandwidth is not being exceeded by the request for processing. So those are some of the most clear signs I think of freezy business and and how to understand uh, freeze also. Oh, one other thing, <laughs> just one more thing, one last thing, uh, is that uh, I mentioned it yesterday, but freeze uh, is also correlated with shame, right? Because again, it's, it feels like non-existence. Like it, so if you haven't built up ego strength to be able to hang in and, and work your way into freeze without it kicking you back, then then it is like non-existence. And shame, again, is this feeling like I don't exist, I don't deserve to exist, I don't deserve you know, any of these things. So uh, it, it really gets associated with it. Nothing I can do, I'm hopeless, helpless. Um, uh, but, and, and I'm invisible, which again, you see how it has its red and blue side. If I'm in a predatory situation and I'm prey, being invisible is my favorite thing. But if I'm out in the world, you know, trying to like, you know, have, an, have a self, being invisible and not getting feedback is like super problematic. Um, I just wanted to ask a quick question. I think that I already know the answer, but um, I have a friend who um, has pointed out to me for years that she'll be talking to me, and then she's like, and then you go away, <laughs> and I don't, I'm, I, I'm. It's like I, f I feel really bad. I feel like I'm just a bad listener and unable to sustain this. And even if we're in the, it happened the other day, we're in the car, it was dark outside and she noticed, she could feel that I was was just not present. And I don't know if that's, if that is freeze, if that's what's happening, if it's, well, it feels uncontrollable. It's not like I'm, you know, right? I don't know. Right, and, uh, and this, is, this is just classic. It's cl uh, I would say, Ignorance. I'm, I'm not going to say bullshit. I'm going to say ignorance. Um, and 
it just it just but it bums me out. It bums me out, but it's it's the law too, which is that's how systems deprive us of our evolution. Because the system's saying you're doing something wrong when in fact you're doing something really right. Your system is saying, uh, I'd love to hang with you, love you, but I've got excess processing I need to tend to, so I'll be <laughs> I have a lot of musician friends, and and <laughs> talk about fun with freeze. So, um, my friend Ralph, uh, by the way, who's the musician for like the family room uh, music that you'll hear beforehand. Uh, so, um, but he said. He said, hey, hey, watch, because uh, band members know each other very well. He's like, uh, watch this, man. I can, I can crack Jamie up so hard I can make him leave his body. And he's like, hey, Jamie. And then he said this thing. And then, uh, and then you saw Jamie beginning to laugh. He's like, <laughs> just, just completely left his body. You know, like in Roger Rabbit or something. Isn't it, isn't it those, those laughing hyenas? They start laughing so hard they go... <laughs> and they just like ascend to heaven. So wouldn't it be nice if my system is inviting me to take a little respite, a little, a little vacation to Mo'orea, the Mo'orea of my mind, then wouldn't it be nice if somebody would go, hey, you know, if you're doing that, let yourself go. And really, you know, take that time and really, you know, like enjoy that and receive that benefit. And I'll be here when you get back. Wouldn't that be nice? And, and, and with kids, super important. And I'm coaching parents and sort of, you know, so much of this I'm learning as a parent myself. Like, kids will do this, right? They'll, they'll be there and then they'll start to daydream, you know, and they'll be off. And parents are often like, hey, hey, hello, hello, snap out of it, right? As if, as if it's a bad thing. No, we need to do that. If you, if you haven't seen the Jada video, you'll see that. Where she does, she goes off. And then I decrease input, my voice becomes soft, and, and Jacob and Julia, because I'm decreasing the intensity and the amount of input for that system. It's catching up, it's, it's catching up, so it's, it's shutting things down, and that system's catching up. And, and we will feel better and do better and have better capacity if we can cooperate with that process and, and receive the benefit. This is why the job is enjoyment, right? because we've got all of these states, and it is classic from our systems that they will not, they will tell us that blue thing is red, and that's, that's a blue thing. For you, that, that's a blue thing, and it's, I mean, it, it, it has blue available, a giftedness for all of us. And, uh, you know, gotta love you, Freeze. It's loving you.